Blake, first of all, congratulations. You know, such a short time since uh, you've been elected and then right into National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. You know, what, is it, what does it mean for you to be in this position in, in office during such a kind of pivotal time here? Well, I think, uh, Melissa, first of all, thanks to all the viewers for my APTN debut in many ways. It's, a, it's great to be here. And I do think that this week, particularly September 30th, our very first national day of truth and reconciliation is an important one for us to reflect on and to really understand the purpose of. I think right now is a critical moment in our history here in Canada where Indigenous history and our pain and our reality is really being understood in a much more in-depth way than I think Indigenous people are used to. Yeah. And many Indigenous people watching probably remember having to explain your own story to your neighbour or to the store shopkeeper or to the regular people in town. Uh, and it takes labor. But what we're seeing this last week was many of these stories have been heard over the past several decades and are finally being retold and revisited and really reflected on. Uh, I really hope that all Canadians take the opportunity to realize what's happened and how deep this pain really goes and to make sure that we're actually changing as a country, that we're pushing forward. And so I want to be a part of that. And that's why I think it's so important to have Indigenous representation in the House of Commons and why I'm so honoured to be able to lift up our people's stories. Well, and I think that a lot of people are feeling that sort of sense of hope that you mentioned there too. Uh, however, we can't not talk about uh, what also happened yesterday. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, uh, first day of rec truth and reconciliation for this country, he jetted off to vacation with his, his family. I know you took to Twitter uh, about that. You know, how, do you, how do you take something like, like that decision to go vacationing on this pretty important day? Mm -hmm. Well, I certainly think that, you know, I've heard from many folks on this issue and I also understand that, you know, everyone, of course, needs time and space to reflect on exactly what this is and what it means to each and every family and person. And I, I understand deeply that if that's what he was doing, then good. But of course, you know, as a member of parliament, our, our job is to make sure that Canadians and our perspectives are heard. And what I've heard over the last 24 hours in light of that were a lot of people's pain. I've mm -hmm. talked to elders and survivors and my own family members and community members who've seen that as a true lacking of the recognition that's required for a day like September 30th, a day where mm -hmm. our job is to remember the individuals, their names, their faces of thousands of children who have died in Canada's horrific residential school system, but to also go the next step and recognize the current struggles and current trauma of Indigenous people every single one of which has been affected by this history. It's so important to understand, especially on September 30th, that this history isn't just about Indigenous people. Mm -hmm. This history is also about Canadians and what Canadians have done. We have to understand that a prime minister of a country like Canada that has committed such atrocities like we all know so deeply in our own families and our own histories, stories and hi uh, realities it doesn't go far enough. Mm -hmm. What I would have liked to have seen and what I've heard from many survivors and community members is for him to have recognized the children on that day, to have gone to the graves, especially those in Canloops in British Columbia where they had sent invitations to the Prime Minister twice mm -hmm. to be in solidarity with them, to understand what this means for the country. It's so important for the Prime Minister, especially the office of the Prime Minister of a country like Canada, to be present on a day like September 30th. And I'll just add that it's the same reason we expect our Prime Minister to show up on Veterans Day. It's the same reason we expect our Prime Minister to show up on Remembrance Day, is people's lives were lost. And, and even more so, he should be there because the responsibility actually lies at the federal government's feet for these things. Mm -hmm. At the very least, he could have shared words with uh, all of us uh, in many ways, in a deeper and much more commemorating way that would have shown us the kind of path forward for Canadians or what Canadians should be focusing on mm -hmm. and that has to be the truth. There can only be reconciliation with truth and we're not yet in the era of reconciliation I believe we're still in the era of truth mm -hmm. and having to listen to what these stories truly mean and making sure our public officials are there in support of that work is critical especially on the first day so mm -hmm. thanks for that question and it was one that I felt emotional about personal about because my own family I have uncles who passed away in the residential school system. I cook them went, my dad went. And it's so important to have heard the voice of the top official in the country to hear about what it meant to them, mm -hmm. especially since they were the institution that created this. Thank you so much, Blake, for taking the time to join us today.
Hi, hi. Thank you, Melissa.